Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Thank you so much to our Patreon Saints. I don't know how many we've got now, I've kind of stopped counting, but thank you guys so much. Today we're going to look at the game Firewatch that was just released onto the eShop. Now it was originally released in 2016 on other platforms and I always wanted to try Campo Santo's story driven game. Unfortunately for me I quite literally set my graphics card on fire at the time and had to take a break from PC gaming. Mixing first person gameplay and a rich narrative driven journey of self discovery, does the Switch journey set the world on fire or should I grab the Switch up extinguisher and put this one well and truly out? Let's find out. You may have played story driven games before, perhaps the excellent life is strange has sucked you in like it did with me, or a more visceral narrative action adventure such as the sublime The Last of Us series. If you're sat there thinking of the great moments within those franchises or your own particular blend of story experience, Firewatch is most certainly for you. It's impossible to talk about story without giving some very minor details away, but I'll do my very best not to. I loved how the first 10 minutes or so of the game paint a narrative for the protagonist Henry, superbly voice acted by the way by the excellent Rich Summer. As you invest in the tale with small decisions such as the name of the dog they choose, it's impossible to not feel like that character is important to you. An incredibly subtle but effective narrative device that serves to ground you in the characters almost immediately. Story during this opening sequence paints a picture of the life hoped for and eventually attained by these individuals. Beautiful small details in the writing create an empathy for them, such as lazy days spent just enjoying a beer or discussions of children, again with your input in the more weighty decisions. Juxtaposing these text only sections are flash forwards to the opening hike through the vast national park in Wyoming. By using the text based intro in parallel to this, you begin to make links between the story unfolding and why Henry has chosen to isolate himself as the new fire lookout miles from civilization. Your walkie talkie is the main narrative vehicle through which you converse with Delilah voiced by Sissy Jones. Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. The main thing of note is how much detail the writers have lavished upon the everyday and even mundane things. As the relationships develop, they never feel forced and you invariably develop your own sense of who these people were. Make no mistake, the story is not without pain and a good deal of anxious decision making. At various points, deciding what to say or not can be an agonizing thing. The game provides you an amount of time proportionate to the difficulty of the decision, but you still feel like time is melting swiftly away in these moments. I like companionship as much as the next person, but why does it have to come from the same person for your whole life? I'm actually married. But you're here. A similar system is used in the ill-fated Telltale games and one that I've always liked as a way of forcing the player into investing themselves in these decisions. And in the same way, silence is always an acceptable response. You control your character in the traditional first person shooter way when that shooter has been adapted for a console. Unfortunately no motion controls are here but the game doesn't require fast movements. I still miss them though, it's a nicer feeling for me to just point a joy-con and look around in the same way you would a mouse and keyboard. Unfortunately they didn't add a look sensitivity option either so even when you're using the sticks it feels a little bit slow. You can interact with objects in the world using the ZR trigger which places them in your hand from there you can rotate these and look at them. This feature was underutilized in my opinion. They could have really added some small details onto these objects such as handwritten messages and the like just to add that extra meat on the story to be actively found by the player. The game plays out over many days. Some of these will be mundane and ordinary as you learn the role of the fire warden. Missions are given to you by Delilah over the radio, so you never feel without purpose. Even mundane tasks such as chasing down some troublemaking teenagers feel purposeful and real. 
Grabbing supplies from the storage boxes is a nice touch as it not only updates your map with new information about the area, but also makes me feel like I was actually doing this job rather than simply watching it play out in front of me. Combined with the map and compass, you have to work out your own routes with a goal given at the top of the screen. Now I loved how little information was given to the player and the blessed lack of a giant on-screen arrow was a godsend. Gamers really need to reconnect with the less is more approach in my opinion. Now despite the appearance of openness, the game is really a series of open looking corridors which connect to larger areas. You can't actually leave the beaten path even though you will feel like you are doing just that. This for me was a positive and a negative. On the one hand, the tight narrative necessitates that you don't spend too long moving from A to B. And the game does lots to make you feel like it's an open-ended experience, such as climbing rocks, abseiling down steep slopes, or jumping over down logs amongst others. It also throws in some later game elements like chopping trees to cross large gaps. On the other hand, when you do try and go off the beaten path and are hit with what is essentially an invisible wall, it can be a little jarring. The meat of the game is the interaction between the two main characters, Henry and Delilah. Problem, bear, fuck that. I am of the opinion that they are all problems. Come on, please. Ugh, I can't believe I'm gonna leave this planet as a pile of bear shit and I cannot emphasize enough just how brilliant that interaction is, from awkward moments where you'll feel the tension in the air, something strange going on, to ones of joviality and humor. Help! Oh God, it's an emergency! Oh, really? Yeah, I got, I got, um, I got eyes on a tornado! I gotta get out of here! A tornado in the heart of the Rockies? Yes! The pace of this game is on the slower side, so the ability to run is welcomed, but you will find slowing down works just as well. Pull out the in-game instant camera and snap some beautiful shots before heading out to your daily tasks. Narrative then binds the experience like few other games I've played. Now without spoiling the arc, you can expect mystery and moments reminiscent of an X-Files episode along with a general feeling of tension throughout. I will say that the story was quite unpredictable and shied away from the over-the-top Hollywood approach. Suffice to say, as with any great story, discussions over the ending and choices made by the writers are rife on the internet. Gameplay is slower paced but also tense and relaxing in equal measure. It scores 17 out of 20. Story is sublimely told from start to contentious finish. Not all questions go answered, but I haven't felt this invested in characters in almost any game I can think of, bar perhaps the first series of The Walking Dead games. I'll miss you, Lee. <sighs> Story scores 20 out of 20. Controls are fine, they just should have added motion controls. Heck, if motion controls are even possible, why not add them? I've heard a few developers state that they aren't accurate enough, but my answer would just be Splatoon. Enough said. That's enough accuracy for me. No option to change the camera speed is also quite annoying. Controls though still score an acceptable 14 out of 20. Tower? Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. So, what should I do now? What's next? Visually, the game has seen some degradation from the other console and PC versions. This is obviously to be expected, however the developer have done an admirable job overall. The aesthetic style works well and some scenes are quite beautiful. There is a great sense of scale to the world and watching a distant fire blaze at night while chatting to Delilah over the radio, I almost forgot I was playing a game. Anti-aliasing is pretty low, but the dreaded blur seems to be much better in this than the last Unreal Engine game that I reviewed. The occasional performance hitch aside, the visuals are very good and still hold up well today. By the way, I don't know if this is Unreal Engine, but that's just a comparison. Audio is so deftly handled, voice acting is just incredibly natural. What's going on? What's Wapiti Station? I, 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 I don't know. And music is there when needed, to be replaced by the throng of creatures in nature that inhabit the park, from the buzzing of bees to birds and even a friendly little raccoon. Visuals and audio score 18 out of 20. The game costs 14 pounds 99, 19 euros 99, 
or $19.99 and it will run you about 5 or 6 hours depending on your pace. I absolutely adored the experience despite the flaws I've mentioned and think that any fan of a narrative driven game will really get their money's worth here. Glenn and I often talk about shorter, well-crafted experiences being far superior to a long and drawn out one. I had no problem putting my own coins towards this. By its very nature though, you may play it once a year or so just to revisit the beautiful atmosphere Campo Santo have managed to create. Value scores 15 out of 20. Firewatch is a game about a normal guy who's dealing with the same things all of us have to as we go through life. It combines tragedy with a hope in a way I haven't seen. There are elements of movie greats, such as the film Into the Wild here, and the overall aesthetic and audio are sublime. It scores a switch-up score of 84%. Now for fans of the genre like me, this is definitely one you're going to want to pick up. But if you're not so sure about the slower pace, perhaps wait for a sale. If you still need convincing, you can adopt a flipping little turtle. Enough said. Thanks so much for watching this review. If you liked it, let us know that by hitting the uh, like button, I guess, or the bell for notifications if you want to subscribe. Thanks so much, guys, and for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya.